folks. I'm Brick Something. And I'm Adam from Highly Articulated. Welcome back to AWOC Talk. This is episode three, if you've been following along, of our show where we're talking everything Animal Warriors of the Kingdom. Um, of course, we talk a lot about it elsewhere on our channels, but we've created this whole thing. AWOC Talk between myself and Highly Articulated on that channel. We're doing every two weeks of Animal Warriors of the Kingdom. So last time on Brick Something on that first episode, we went through issue number one and we're going to continue today kind of going through the comic lore because we really love the story of what, mm -hmm. and the world of what's happening with AWOC. Yes. But frankly, not enough people know about it. We're going to finish up with issue one, talk a little bit more about the characters, do a little bit of like speculation, theorizing, mm -hmm. and then uh, we'll start moving along to issue number two. Again, just want to say right off the bat that there's going to be sort of spoilers for the story, but we will not be reading the comic to you. We will not be going page by page. So I guarantee you, if you go back and look at number one, yeah. and you read through that, you're going to realize, oh my God, they never even mentioned this, right? Yes. So <laughs> check it out. Let's go ahead and um, just start off maybe recapping where we left off mm. for the folks that might have missed it. Yeah, absolutely. The big touching points that we kind of uh, talked about were Mother Mika and the exposition that she gave. You know, we, mm. we went pretty in-depth on this two-page spread. This panel is really the, the juxtaposition of sort of everything that's going on in the world. So this is uh, Mika explaining to Pale what he is, you know, where they all came from, where Pale came from, the sort of mechanics of why there are these animal tribes and sort of what brought that about. Then we talked a little bit about the desire for the Chunari to unite the other tribes that are sort of in opposition to the Horde. So anybody that might be willing to stand against Kali. Mm -hmm. And then we looked a little bit as well at Kali and the cloning process and what do the clones mean to him? Mm -hmm. You know, what is he using them for? Jadu is there as the evil mad scientist that's sort of pulling the strings a little bit too. So we'll touch on all these things a little bit more. You know, what we think these might mean, uh, where these storylines might go and, mm -hmm. uh, and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's just to get you situated, but if you really kind of want to know what that was all about and you missed that first episode, take a look back here on Brick Something for a Walk Talk. It'll be all there, and then come back. So last time, if you were with us, we went through the comic book in terms of the, the overall themes, you know, things like used to be human, cloning, interplanetary space travel, the Chunari versus the Horrid, and other broad topics. There's so much world building in this issue, though, that just by default, there's as many questions as there is answers, I think. Yep. While we were going through this, we were just kind of moving through big story plots, big world elements. Mm -hmm. But I know that you and I had a lot of big questions. Certain things were yes. triggered, whether they're thematic or our questions about like, where could this go? A little bit of speculation. Let's spend mm -hmm. a little bit of time doing that. I know you yes. had some big questions, so let, let's uh, let's go and start there. Yeah, I mean, when we went over that big panel, right, that big mm -hmm. exposition, my first read through was just jaw dropped, eyes wide open. I was just like, this is epic. Like yeah. interplanetary travel, you know, we don't necessarily know where they came from. We don't know if mm -hmm. they necessarily knew where they were going. They're in these giant ships called ARCs. We see multiple arcs. Yep. Where are the other arcs? Because they mm -hmm. kind of say that the AI on their arc decided to manipulate their DNA. Did the other arc, you know, is there a shared AI? Is there unique AI on each ship? So like the AI was, was one of the things that I, that I have all these questions about. Yeah. My other big question was, I mean, if this is a full planet and if it's anywhere the size of Earth, mm -hmm. What we see in the comic book all seems to take place in a, in a relatively small area. So what else is going on on this planet? I mean, we've seen some of the wild beasts and some of the stuff that, that is native to the planet. But what else might be native to the planet? Uh, or or is there more, are there more tribes that we haven't seen, that we haven't encountered, that we'll sort of see further down the line? So let's, let's start there. So let's go to the whole sort of science fiction premise that mm -hmm. they had 
presumably humans. They actually use the word human. So whether that's actually meant to be us or our yeah. future, who knows? But presumably humans, Earth-like. And all the references, like the idea of an ark, right? Obviously, those mm -hmm. have biblical references of this notion of there's catastrophe. Let's get all life onto this giant ship. And yeah. that will be our hope of continuing life. As you pointed out, we're talking multiple ships. All right, when Mika is sort of narrating, she says, and we arrived at our new home, we see four ships and then looks like one might be destroyed or something, if I'm understanding that right. Yeah, when I read that one, so I saw the four and they're mm -hmm. all, you know, relatively close together. So it, it, yep. And it mentions that like the AI on their arc mm -hmm. started kind of manipulating their DNA and started kind of breaking itself down. Um, yep. Was there a glitch in the AI or was this AI aware of what it was doing? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. was there a virus in the software or was, was the software aware of what it was doing? That's a great question. If I'm going simply by the text, by what is there, yeah, yeah, yeah. it literally says it judged us. At least that's yeah. Mika's perspective, right? So the way she frames it is like it judged us based on likely our history of what we just mm -hmm did to our planet and we had to leave. It did say that they had taken with them on these arcs all of the, I guess the building blocks of life, if I'm remembering, mm -hmm. right? DNA, yeah, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. Again, truly this arc references of like bringing all the different species and life yeah. aboard. Yeah. So it did something, it judged them and then it did something, right? That, that shot of the sort of laser-like thing coming down with the people mm -hmm. looking off in the distance, again, fully human looking in space suits. Mm -hmm. They're there, they're watching this thing come down and there's some sort of like bright light, presumably this process. So it's mm -hmm. transforming them. It had the DNA of other species and she said it combined our species with other creatures mm -hmm. that would live more in harmony in this new world with nature, presumably. Yeah. They clearly mix them with, you know, the other great apes, right? Chimps, gorillas, etc. cetera. Um, Orangutan. Right. It seemed very much so like our creation, the AI, uh -huh. had opted to judge us. And for the sake of maybe even our survival and the planets decided this was the way to go. Yeah. You brought up something when you were sort of introducing it, the fact that there are multiple ships. And yeah. you said that it was localized. And you're right. If I'm looking closely at just what's there, what we're given, we see a shipwreck of a, a group of people. It doesn't look mm -hmm. like necessarily multiple crashes. So where are those other ships, right? Yeah. The big I mean, planet, as you say. Did they also land on this planet? Did, mm -hmm. did they keep going to the next planet we don't necessarily even know that the the four ships or the, the or the half a dozen ships that we see are all of them right they, they could have gone mm -hmm. another direction so they're you know out of frame out of shot mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. a whole planet wide evacuation kind of thing right is, yeah. is my yeah. is what i sort of imagine when they talk about we had a planet we had cities of, of steel and glass we built these ships and we went in search of, of a new home. You know, it doesn't say we knew where we were going, right? It right. feels a little bit like um, some other properties that we know. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to get these wrong because I'm not a big enough fan. So come it's at cool. me in the comments. Go you for it. Yeah, because uh, like I'm thinking in that. Transformers, mm -hmm. like some of these other these other IPs where, you know, as as a culture, as a planet, as as a people has, you know, either wasted their resources, just done whatever they've done to their planet, or there's war, or there's whatever, you know, that this idea of escape and, and looking yep. for a for a new start is a theme that we've seen before, but this feels a little bit different because it has that AI component added into it. Mm -hmm. We do know that Mika and Kali are from that sort of first generation that were transformed. Yep. Yep. And so that means if I'm just sort of taking that at face value, then I might assume, say, that Thane and Mala are sort of a next generation. Mm -hmm. And that's, then from yeah, there, that's the impression I get for sure. Pale would be the next generation. So we're mm -hmm. talking like, you know, a good at least maybe 40 some years. Yeah. There's a couple questions there. If that were the case and there were other sort of ships that crashed somewhere else, perhaps it's large enough where, and they're far enough apart that even within 40 years, they, they don't make contact. But yeah. think about the story possibilities that could bring later where uh -huh. they uh -huh. get reunited or discovered. So we saw Mika reveal this to Pale uh -huh. and 
Thane seems to know his origins, right? Mm -hmm. So the question is, I don't know who all knows all that. Yeah. So Or how much everybody knows. Right. So then what if they hypothetically meet some of these other people and what mm -hmm. could the reactions of that be? Could there be some of the animal warriors who don't know that they're originally human that might be frustrated or angry at this and might mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. want to like, uh, just, again, we are just speculating. Yeah. Um, but I think good storytelling allows for some of that to happen, right? Absolutely. And gets you thinking about it. And uh, clearly there's like, Potent, lots of potential for more to come. I, I mean, that's the thing, right? Like we're we're sitting here speculating. This is the, this is the first half of issue one. Yeah, yeah. And we're like, oh man, where do where do they go from here? Okay, I do want to go back because you were starting to talk about other properties. Yeah, and I because I have heard some folks go, oh yeah, that's just Thundercats, dude. Or yeah, no, what is this? This Planet of the Apes. And so I understand that urge because one, it's nostalgia, right? And people have the things mm -hmm. that they love. Nothing's going to replace that or anything that maybe seems similar gets sort of written off. Okay, fine. Sure. Yeah, yeah. The second part of that, though, is I do recognize that this is being created by Jason, who, like you and I, roughly the same age-ish, came mm -hmm. up at a time when we were being bombarded by all of these properties as young people. And it wasn't really like today for anybody who's younger than us. It was not like today in the <laughs> sense days. that, yeah, well, like right now, reality, if you look at the way mainstream um, entertainment is being presented, it's going back to things that are established and trying to mm -hmm. either reboot them or continue them as sequels. But back then, literally, like every year, we were presented with two or three, sometimes more, brand new properties, right? Within yeah. just a couple of years, we had... G.I. Joe, Thundercats, Transformers, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. And these are like the big ones. And then for every one of those, there was a Bionic 6 and a Mighty Orbots. And, you know, you could just keep going, right? For There was the Thundercats, and then there were the Tiger Sharks, and then there yeah, were the yeah, yeah. Right, Silverhawks. Silverhawks, yeah. So we could go on and on and on and on. And the reality is, like, there was just new stories along the way because at that time, I think there was this desire to throw out a bunch of new ideas to sort of see what kids would embrace. Mm -hmm. When someone now does what some 40 years later comes out with things that are anthropomorphic animals, you can't help but go, oh yeah, Thundercats. But I want to no, say- it's, already, it's been done. Yeah. 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 And I've even heard people say, based on what you and I went over with the lore last time with the AI, um, and you even you and I were even kind of naming it. Oh yeah, that reminds me of the Terminator or oh yeah yeah the Matrix. I, mean, it, I can't even imagine what it's like to be in Spiro's shoes and develop this property. And they can't help but draw on the things that they grew up with and the stories and whether you consider them tropes or archetypes. Yeah, and genre that's all out there. And you you love those things, so it feels natural to include those things. But I will say that this interesting combination of things feels unique and two yeah. i think more importantly there is a sorry human story mm -hmm. of pale being told being bombarded with not just his own origins but the origins essentially of his people and species and planet yeah. and world yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah that is done in a way that like feels kind of relatable like oh yeah what would i do and then there's this next, you know, we start to see them. Well, we now unite the houses and this whole world needs to come to terms with how are we going to deal with this Kali guy who basically yeah. seems to want to control all of us. So those are all relatable themes that for people who are like, well, this is a new line. I don't know anything about it or maybe wrote it off. There might be some people who might be like, oh, that's interesting. That reminds me of that. And I want to check it out. Not as a way to say, oh, yeah, it's just like these other things. But I actually kind of want to celebrate it because I'm, you know, at this point in my life where I've ingested so much media, especially geeky genre stuff. And when I looked at this Animal Warriors of the Kingdom comic book and I was reading it, it really was like it felt to me more like a love letter and this yes. opportunity to revisit a lot of those things that I love. A hundred percent in one package, right? Mm -hmm. And so we mentioned Thundercats. So that was there. Those elements are there. You mentioned Transformers, which I hadn't even been thinking about, but yeah, they literally are on a giant ship 
called the Ark. The Ark. <laughs> right? Escaping the, their world ravaged by war. Mm -hmm. And in very similar ways, they're they're being hunted by this, this dude Megatron who clearly has an axe to grind and is just going to mm -hmm. go after them and go after them. Like those elements are here. But they're obviously not the same. So I just, like, I want to think about what are the other ones that I'm, at least I'm seeing and just name them that like, I love about this. Um, sure. So you said Transformers, Thundercats. Mm -hmm. Another big one for me is, I don't know, Battlestar Galactica, was that a big thing for you? Not so much as a kid, but like as uh -huh. a teenager. And then when they when they redid it in right. the, the late 90s or early 2000s, I yeah. absolutely loved that one. The remake was just so good. And and again, it, it it's very much that idea, right? Yep. There, there's sort of an AI in a human thing and when the ai comes back it goes yeah we kind of looked at what you guys are doing and we don't really agree with it yep. so there i i see that element for sure but even in the original the show introduction starts off with the premise that humanity left earth mm -hmm. on several ships and there were the lost tribes and they were dispersed right so that reminded yeah. me a lot of what's happening here too it was like yeah where are those yeah. other ships and they were trying to find the new home essentially mm -hmm. um so much of that is here and i totally was just like wow that's the the beauty of like nerddom really it's just mm -hmm. sort of like you love these things and at least the way i want to look at it is i'm not going to be super critical or be in this camp versus this show's better than that it's like i i loved it all yeah and what i'm seeing here is a similar like i love these things i don't you know someday we're going to talk to jason soon but like mm -hmm. i am kind of curious how much of that you know is intentional or how much just, sure yeah 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 i am really curious what informed his um storytelling but also like what what were the things that he loved right yeah what's the recipe like what you know mm -hmm. how, what percentage of it is is which of the things that we've talked about and how many things you know, is there an element that's in here that we're not sort of seeing in terms of yeah. like, actually, this was sort of a reference to this or whatever, right? right? There's a, there, there's Love an that. Easter egg here that, that nobody's caught or whatever. Right. Um, and we'll be like, whoa. Yeah. You know, when they say like, oh, we had cities of steel and glass. Like, I wonder if that's like, you know, alluding to a particular property or something like that, right? I Were you think wondering Krypton? Krypton? Yeah. Uh, Right there with you. Like I totally. think of like, you know, this planet is 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 about to implode. It's about to sort of mm -hmm. blow up or whatever. And so we're just trying to get everybody out. So let's just uh, do like a quick five minute thing and then we'll move on. Mm -hmm. Just name without having to talk why or even what. Any property that you are reminded of by any part of the AWOC sure. story. We'll just do a back and forth of, yep. uh, of something, of just properties without explaining. Okay. And then we can even maybe later have Jason look at this and tell us how wrong we were. Yes, yes. Go for it. Rambo. Nice. Star Wars. That's an easy one. Yeah. Planet of the Apes. Uh, speaking of easy ones. Island of Dr. Moreau. Oh, yeah. Totally. <laughs> I didn't even think of that one. Um, uh, Redwall. What's that? Uh, so it's anthropomorphized animals, but they're it's it's like medieval. Oh. So it's it's like it's like knights and things, but they're okay. like mice and ferrets and badgers and like. That's cool. Right on. Okay. Um, Avatar: The Last Airbender. Thundercats. Avatar is a good one. Um, a Song of Ice and Fire slash Game of Thrones, etc. Edge of Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This is fun. Uh, let's do two more, one each. Let's see. Wally. Oh, I like that. I'm. I can't. <sighs> <laughs> is it called the island with Ewan with McGregor? Ewan McGregor he, and, and, and Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Where he learns that he's a clone and that, yeah. like, I yeah. love that movie. You know, yeah. you, you know, Underrated. that's a Michael Bay movie, right? Unfortunately, yeah. I when I <laughs> I watched it and I like didn't really think about it. Then I was like, oh my god, this is a Michael Bay film. And yeah. then when you go back and watch like the action sequences, you're like, oh, obviously, yeah, it's a Michael yeah, Bay totally. Film. So that's our random list, and maybe someday we'll have Jason tell us how right or wrong we are. But I am curious <laughs> for those of you watching, 
throw it in the comments. What are the ones that you see mm -hmm. as you're either hearing about this lore or if you've read the comics yourselves? What are the sort of genre touchstones and other stories that you're seeing? I bet there's going to be some that we did not think of. Oh, totally. All right. So last time we started going through issue one. At this point, obviously, this is connected to a toy line. Yeah. And Spiro has um, given us some figures and we have wave two coming. So I figure we'll go through issue one, take a look at some of the characters that came up, even background characters. And let's mm -hmm. talk about which ones have figures or maybe which ones have figures coming up. All right. So let's start here. Obviously, we know we've got pale. Um, but what about this big guy? So, yeah, we've got pale, who's obviously the main character. We've got mm -hmm. Thane, who is a big, chunky gorilla. Uh, mm -hmm. coming in wave two. I okay. think he's going to be one of the figures that, uh, that, that really gets people talking about a walk that totally. aren't talking about it mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I hear people talking about it. I sort of see discussions online and so on and so forth where people are like, Oh yeah, that's that line with that big, huge gorilla. Yep. Um, I, I can't wait for him because that's, that's, uh, you know, Wave one and most of wave two is is the similar size as far as the buck, yep. uh, but that is a way bigger, way chunkier, wider, taller, thicker. Uh, he's going to be an absolutely amazing figure and such a presence on a show. Yep. Uh, so that's coming in wave two, which should be shipping really soon, right? Yeah. As far as we know, it's on the water and the target is this summer. So we're really likely yeah, in about of, a month and a half june ish yeah mm -hmm. all right here we got um mala uh, mala i mean the 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 matriarch of of the chunari tribe we don't know a ton about her yet you know as we discussed last time there's there's a lot of questions about her relationship to pale her relationship to kali but again a figure that we know is coming uh i believe it's wave five if i'm not mistaken wave five okay where we're going to get, you know, a slimmer buck. Again, I always get excited when there's sort of a different sized figure. So that will be our first female. So Mala will be um, one of the first female figures we'll be getting. So you're thinking, Correct. Wait, yeah. Five. Got it. Yeah. So what's with this orangutan, right? Laranha. Do we have any sense of if there's going to be a figure? Because I feel like there was concept art, right? There is art. There is uh -huh. a turnaround shots for, uh -huh. for this guy. I believe that it's been said that that he will that Laranya will be in the line. It just hasn't been, you know, we we don't know when. They put they put that out. I remember seeing yeah. that, right? There you go. Right on. There he is. And of course we've got the Chinari Legionaries, right? Yeah, we see them kind of throughout the first book. You know, slightly different colors of fur and so on and so forth, but all all quite similar. All right, so let's move over to the Horrid. And of course, we've got our antagonist, our main antagonist, Kali. Yeah. And we have Jadu, who we've seen concept art for and a prototype figure or a render. Yep. That's going to be, again, in the same wave as Mala, right? Wave Correct. five? Yep. That's, again, going to be great to have two female figures. And using the same book, totally different looking characters. Mm -hmm. um, the colors are going to be amazing on both those characters, but just especially with Jadu, with that shock of pink hair. And of course, in wave one, we got the Horde Ravagers. You know, between the Horde Ravagers and then some of the other figures, uh, you know, the the Primal Ancients, which are yep. the, those basic figures that, that uh, Spirit Toys is doing as well. Um, you know, a little bit of pop and swap and uh, you've, you've got some variety there. So, so that, I think that's really the main one so far in the story. And we'll kind mm -hmm. of do this every now and then as we move further along. I do want to take some time to quickly look at what's happening in some of these background characters, right? So if I look at yeah. these pictures of the Horde Ravagers that come to attack the Chinari, um, we've got different looking apes, right? Different yeah. colors, um, different hair sort of styles, weapons, etc. Don't know if those are all going to come in action figure form. But yeah, I mean, there, there's an, there's an element here, too, where the Horde Ravager that we got is like pretty well accessorized, right? He's got a decent amount of armor, uh, so on and so forth. But what we see in some of these panels is is that the Horde is sometimes just this ragtag group of just savage creatures. Yep. 
yeah. uh, with with pretty minimal armor, minimal armaments. I mean, I think you could make some of the some of these figures go a long way by sort of swapping some parts and so on and so forth, and, and, yep. and kind of uh, mix and match and just have some fun with it. Uh, I know I'm going to right like these two right here. Um, you could take some of those um, primal ancients mm -hmm. and take some of the armor from characters that are coming out relatively soon. The what is it, Cordun and uh, okay. Lexion. Lexion and Cordun both have removable armor that looks similar to these. You know, mm -hmm. wouldn't take much to. Even if you just put on that armor onto the, some of those primal ancients, yeah, um, or did some painting, right? Smart in the character designs and the drawings on these comics, right? Uh -huh. To give us things yeah. that we could make. Well done. We see you. Speaking of, in the background, who's this big guy, right? We, we, big we, we yeah, we've got some big folks. And again, in wave three coming up, we know that we're gonna get a big. Gorilla Horrid uh, Ravager, I guess you call it. Yeah, Big Gorilla Horrid Ravager. I want to say Berserker, Horrid Berserker, I think okay. is the is the name of the figure. But very similar at the same buck as Thane. Yeah. I do want to just quickly show, like, look at the folks, the Chinari that are sort of in prison, right? That would be fascinating. Um, if, if Spiro doesn't do it, I'm sure some talented customizers might be making some soft goods to get some of these looking characters. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say it's 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 sort of as easy as removing the armor and, and and putting a some some soft good piece on there. I think. Yeah. So that's kind of it for I think the sort of anthropomorphic characters. But I do want to name. We also see some steeds. So this is really early on. This is like uh, page two of issue one. Mm -hmm. But notice the steeds. I love them. I do too. They're so. This is the first cool, and this is the first we see. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, just to sort of get back a little bit to the world building part of it, right? This is the first yeah. where we see like a, a a species that we don't know. That all the sp animal species that we know from Earth, yeah. right? Which is part of the reason why I think it's it's pretty easy for us to assume that they came from Earth and that they're mm -hmm. humans. Yep. But then when we see these mounts, and then later on we'll see a few other animals that are are clearly native to this planet and yeah. and alien to us. Yes. You know, if we got uh, steeds like these, a la Mythic Legion's horses and moose, um, it'd be amazing. I especially, would, oh, man. I would be all over <laughs> that. Especially if you look at sort of the uh, biology or the sort of anatomy of these things, the way that yeah. you know, they've got very different joints. Um, I don't know. It's it, It'll be really exciting. And then at the bottom of that same page, mm -hmm. something, there's gigantic i don't know maybe elephant like creatures right next to our first shot of mechs like really early yeah. on this yeah. this panel establishes oh there's a a lot happening in this world right so we've got that giant creature that'd be amazing right can you imagine that i would have space for it wouldn't have space and it'd be the equivalent of probably another kickstarter or it would be like if thing. i'm just looking at how big those those characters are right in yeah. relation like what yeah. what would we say like to the top of its back three of those figures yeah just to get to the top of the back not to mention the not the to mention the structure on top, on top yeah. of it yep so it would be it would be three feet tall it wouldn't be nearly as high as galactus maybe but um, it would be well it might be close and then we've got that mech yeah, it's essentially a platform, like a two pilot platform. God, imagine what the possibilities are. I could see, but I mean, you know, using sort of artistic license in the same way that you know a lot of our favorite childhood IPs did. Said, yeah, you true. could scale this down, I think, a little bit, yeah. and it and it could still be a toy. Absolutely, um, and I'd buy it. So, <laughs> yeah, so would I. That's yeah. And here we go. The last but not least, a dragonfly yeah. mech. Oh. Yeah. And, and I love this guy. That I, when you said sectars. Yep. 100%. Look at that. Just I for mean, the that's, dragonfly. Not for that, anything else. <laughs> yep. I had sectars. That's like in your hand right there. I could see mm -hmm. that with pale on top, right? Mm -hmm. it totally. It's perfect. It's that same form factor. We're good. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Give it. If they could engineer it so that those wings could kind of tuck right back like a dragonfly's wings do, yeah. it might not take up that much space. And again, I had the sectars. That was essentially how they worked. And uh -huh. sectars are actually bigger than these guys. So it happened once. Yeah. You could do it again. <laughs> and really There's quickly, before, before we move on, hiding in these corners is the pilot. 
look at yeah. that guy. Give yeah. me the, give me the, you know, the teched out goggle horrid ravager, mm -hmm. right? Or horrid whatever pilot. Horrid pilot, yeah. So clearly, Jason and company, Utama and company, they are peppering in all these wonderful little things to get our toy buying, you know, antenna up mm -hmm. and sort of like ready. So uh, time will tell. Yeah. In terms of what we'll see, but it's again, everything's toyetic. Everything yes. in this world yeah. would would make for for a great toy that, that we would have loved as kids and, and will buy now as adults. Yep, absolutely. So let's now move a little further with the story. So on our first episode of AWOC Talk, we went through basically issue number one and showed a couple of panels in issue number two. Today, let's come back to issue number two. Mm -hmm. So we established last time that the heroes have to deal with the attacks of Kali. And the decision is, let's try to go on this quest to unite all the different houses against Kali. Mm -hmm. So issue two opens up and actually we see Pale still kind of reeling from the revelation and trying to come to terms with what it actually means to be a clone of Kali. So let's take a look at this sequence a little bit closer. Takes you a little bit to kind of realize what's happening. But really, all of this is a fever dream, a nightmare mm -hmm. of him sort of processing this new truth. In it, there are some battle scenes yeah. of all sorts of different animals fighting. These could be all things that we might be getting soon. If you're familiar with what's coming in Wave 2, we're going to get some animals that kind of look like some of the ones that we see here. But if I could just do a quick zoom and tease you with some of the things in this panel... Basically, the future is bright, I think, for Animal Warriors of the Kingdom yeah. and the potential of toys. So clearly, Pale is dealing with some sort of internal struggle, trying yeah. to come to terms with what's going on. Big time. That is the entry point that we as an audience can start to relate to this larger struggle that's happening in this world, mm -hmm. where now they have to deal with Kali and his armies, and they have to find a way to meet that threat. As we mentioned last time, the solution is diplomacy. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can reach out to the other great houses and unite them against Kali. So where do they end up going? They end up entering into the lands of the House Feralist. This is that cat, you know, house. So here we find Chinari entering the, uh, the lands that sort of is associated with House Feralist. We see the oh, so first... Cool feralist city, Taziki, um, where they are greeted with open arms by the leader of House Feralist, Hannibal. And Hannibal clearly has ah, so some cool. history mm -hmm. with Mala. You know, there's a vibe between him and Thane. <laughs> there, there's a little something, there's backstory there for sure. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as they're entering, I love sort of seeing the many, many people that opt that's people the many many sort of yeah i'll just say beings that yeah, occupy yeah, yeah. this world right so house fearless and the the tzatziki uh the pride lands they all come to sort of celebrate them so mm -hmm. there is this sense of like warmth towards these other beings they, they're not they don't seem like they're at war with one another no but whether or not they'll join Chinari mm -hmm. in essentially declaring war against Kali, I guess, is the big challenge, right? Yeah. There seems to be a bit of competition, right? But mm -hmm. we don't necessarily know if that's, you know, Hannibal and Thane more than it is, you know, the house, yeah, Feralist and Chinari tribe. True. Enough. Um, so there's there's tension, but it might be on a personal level more so than like a sort of group level. Because, yeah, they, they come into that they enter through the, the gates of this city and, and you know, the, the inhabitants of the city are happy to see them and, and, and welcoming. Um, and it's really not until Hannibal and Thane kind of lock eyes that, it's the, that we get the sense that, you know, there's, there's something going on here. That interaction's beautiful. It's Thane. great. Hannibal. <laughs> And then we are actually, it seems like that gets, as as often does with uh, people, that gets transferred to the next generation, right? Yeah, yeah. So Hannibal's son, um, Atreyu, who we see here, mm -hmm. and Thane's son, Pale, 
now have to do a ceremonial tradition, right? Uh huh. Essentially, fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What'd you think of this? I thought it was interesting because, um, like I said, there, there, there's clearly like a tension, but I think mm -hmm. it's like a, it, like it's a brotherly thing mm -hmm. because they even say, you know, that they're that the that the the fight is is traditional. And it's kind of symbolic. You know, they're not fighting to the death. It's purely just like. Hey, let's have a little bit of fun. What this does is sort of sets up both of these younger characters as sort of formidable fighters because that comes into yes. play later. Because it's because it's pale and Atreyu, you know, this is it's kind of foreshadowing, right? Because this is mm -hmm. this is them learning about each other and and yeah. sort of figuring out that um, they're like you said, you know, they're they're both formidable combatants, mm -hmm. and so on some level they're they're kind of measuring each each other up. Uh, and, and sort of figuring out who each other is. And, and, and I think, you know, the impression that I got was that, that there's a mutual respect, you yeah. know, between the two of them. Um, and they're, they're kind of fast friends. Like they're, um, you know, where Hannibal and Thane kind of look at each other in this very contentious way, Atreyu and Pale are like immediately drawn together. Yep. They kind of come together too, because basically the grownups have a meeting yeah and they're not allowed to be no. there, right and they're planning their next move prop presumably talking about the potential of them joining forces against kali so what we see here is um laranja sort of like pointing out that oh you have intel right you have information mm -hmm. on um the horrid strongholds is what he sort of mm -hmm. calls them right so laranja in this this panel right here is actually pointing out that right here is a a mech production factory Right? Yes. Yeah. So it seems like they're able to at least convince Hannibal that we should consider joining forces against Kali. So this is totally that scene we see in movies where the good guys are figuring out their plan, right? Mm -hmm. So they're saying, we're going to move in. Here's an operation. Can we move in and take this base, sabotage mm -hmm. this facility? And so, of course, there's mentions that it's really dangerous, et cetera. Clearly, it's a it's going to be a big move. Mm -hmm. So, what do the two boys who weren't invited to the party do? Right, they eavesdrop and they say, "Let's let's go." Yeah, let's prove our worth by right. doing something stupid. <laughs> Which then takes us to here, the horrid mech facility. They show up. What does one do in genre literature? You sneak in through the sewers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You go through the cave. You go yeah. where it's darkest and dampest. Um, and what inevitably happens every time, too? They get caught. Yeah. I think that's a good place to pause story-wise until we pick up next time. Our two young... The impetuous are, princes. Have now found themselves in a situation where they spoiled a potential surprise attack. Yeah. And have essentially been captured. And a reminder... What is Kali looking for most in the world? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's pale. pale. Yeah, exactly. What's what's the last thing we want to do? Give him pale. What does pale want to do? Run full speed into uh, a horrid <laughs> mech facility. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's great to end there. I do want to just, you know, show folks that your eyes another, aren't tricking you. Another one. Yep. It's another big mech spider looking thing. And if you zoom in, you'll see there's guard, uh, sorry, guard horde ravagers mm -hmm. piloting this thing. Let's talk a little bit about the toy possibilities again and some of the figures. And then I think that's probably going to be the end of this episode. First, since we're here, um, Atreyu. Yeah. We have an Atreyu figure, right? Yeah. And he's dope. Tell me more about that. Cause I've heard you talk about him. Is he one of your favorites? Ah. <sighs> I can't pick favorites. There are there there hasn't been a figure that I've been like, yeah, this one's not as good as the others. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's a great looking figure. I've mentioned this before, but like the fact that he's a lion, he has this big great mane, but it's pulled back into a uh -huh. ponytail. I think yeah. it's just such a cool, you know, design choice. Uh, what I like too is that with a lot of these figures, you know, in the book, they mm -hmm. have a particular weapon that they that they tend to use yes. often, right? And Atreyu has this sword. And yeah. that's the sword that you get with the figure. Yeah. Pale is the same with his sword uh, and his yeah. and his little hook daggers. The the weapons are accurate, but I also yeah. just want to point out, like, man, gone are the days where 
you know, you'd watch a cartoon and then you'd mm-hmm. get toys and mm-hmm. it just didn't match up, right? Yep. Now, like they're doing it right where it's like, okay, we're really going to keep it on model so that oh, you yeah. can truly get um, the toy version of what you're reading in these stories. It really sort of ties the two together for yeah. me at least, right? Me like, too. Yep. When when uh, the figure looks like it's, it's right out of the page and yep. vice versa. Yep. So, you know, it's it, to me, it's sort of like if you love one, you'd be hard pressed not to love the other. 100%. Some of the other toy things that come up, um, we did talk about Hannibal. Um, mm-hmm. But um, again, one of those where we haven't seen figure renders, but we have seen concept art and turnarounds. Yeah. Wave six. Hannibal's going to be in wave six. Wave Are five we- is basically the Mala wave. Sure, wave six but- is the Hannibal wave. Um, and it's still a ways out. So that could, you know subject to change uh, but hannibal will be a, another new buck awesome that's awesome. he won't he won't be as big as thane but he'll okay. definitely be bigger than the the wave uh, one figures what other characters were we introduced in this section so far that we've seen i guess not really anyone yet right which i think might leave a lot of people wondering where are those other cats that are coming in wave two yep right well, if you're wondering where those wave two cats are, so are stay we. tuned. <laughs> so we'll we'll take a look at those later. So we did talk about the steed and these giant sort of animal type creatures, which do have a name, by the way. Cash Kachi. Beast or Catchy Beast. I don't Kachi. know. Kachi. So those are great. But I do want to point do out that? as there are these other ones that are just sort of drawn in there. Yeah, that wouldn't be hard to do like little, you know, non-articulated little cool dinosaur lizard type creatures. There's even in the shot where Thane and, and Hannibal yep. have their moment. There's a the little parrot like creature, too. Yeah, this one. Yeah, that one right there. He's got a little horn, but he has arms. And these little creatures are what fascinate me. This is this is what makes me feel like this isn't Earth, right? Like all the actors are uh, familiar. You know, they're we're saying that they were human and now they're sort of animals. Mm-hmm. But there's also animals on this yep. planet, and and so I I think it's very very clever how they've differentiated, you know, native species from the the characters. If that makes sense, I agree. I I will only just throw out one part about the idea of native or non sentient beings versus the characters. For all we know, the AI took the DNA from their old home world and maybe mm. even either created these characters or transformed or something we just don't know right that, that's a good point i'm making the assumption that these yeah. are, that these are endemic to this that planet, these were right? there they, right yeah, yeah yeah we've got um full-on like ter- pterodon type things that we <laughs> see at different points pteranodon sorry so there's like a whole ecosystem and true world happening in animal warriors of the kingdom depending on how much time this thing is is out there and how much how far it goes um we could be seeing some really really cool things even play sets right i mean mm-hmm. like that room with a giant computer thing or you know this sort of like city that they're in yep. i could see a lot of really really cool playset opportunities dios whatever yeah so. that's i i'm looking at a lot of these for for like dio potential i mean the the whole world has a really a really dynamic feel to it right like mm-hmm. not all the buildings look the same right each each house each each tribe each each group has like a different feeling to their architecture and how they've uh you know constructed buildings I, that's the kind of stuff that i nerd out on too is that mm-hmm. like the fact that these details were considered and it's not just like oh they're all the, all the buildings are the same and they just yep. You know, different people live in them. I will say also, again, you know, I'm I'm one of those persons who wants to see the everyday people in toys. That's just me. Um, but also, it's just cool. There's different looking. So even seeing some of these house fearless folk in their clothing would be cool. Mm-hmm. And I'm assuming it's only going to happen if there's a main character that is this. But maybe seeing some of the young folks in a smaller buck, like the little kids. Um, yeah, a wily kid and a wily cat. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of potential. Once again, we're now in issue two, but we're not going page by page. There's still a lot more that you yeah. have seen. You know, this time around, you didn't even see a lot of the text. That's all to say that all of these comics, issues one, two, and three, 
right now are available over at spirotoys.com. The comics, the digital comics are what, $2 now, right? Two bucks. So do you happen to remember how much the hard copies are? $4.98. Come on, $5 for a physical comic book with all this amazing art that you've seen. Hopefully you agree with us that this world is fascinating, that there's definitely something in here that's special, that's unique, that may have connections to some of the other genre things that we all mm -hmm. know and love, but has packaged it in a way and is telling a story that is fairly fresh, different. For me, I am really curious as to where this is going to go. Like, how is this going to resolve? We've yeah. just seen one of the houses that they're going to try and unite with. And we now know that our, our main character, Pale, is potentially in the clutches of the Horrid. So yeah. what happens next, right? Well, so <laughs> stay tuned. We should mention too, I mean, the figures, right? Like we're talking about the comic book, we're talking about mm -hmm. the lore, but go get the figures. So hopefully you're getting a sense that not only are these really cool action figures, but like a lot of the things that we grew up with, it's based in a world that has this fascinating story. Yeah. And it's just interesting to me, man, because I, I, I see people say it all the time. Wow, those look really cool, but like I don't know anything about them or, or I don't have a connection to them. Mm -hmm. I totally respect that because I get it. You grew up with this story and it means something to you. I guess what I want to see people do is consider the possibility that there could be new stories yeah. that could be just as good, potentially even better that you could come to know and love and buy brand new toys from a brand new indie toy company. I've been following this toy thing and it just seems like people love their nostalgia brands, but they're so angry at the companies that are, right? So it was like, hey, yeah, just, I, I want to throw this out there. Maybe this is a good is point, right? You're, you're starting makes you fresh. happy. You know, it's kind of like keep an open mind to the idea that, you know, every every toy line that you sort of love from your childhood had to start somewhere right so yeah. yeah you know grab issue one grab a figure or two and and give them a chance um because you know you and i strongly believe this and i think yeah just about anybody that we've convinced to sort of do what we're saying has right. absolutely kind of fallen in love with these figures yeah. um and the comic book I'm just pumped that we're getting in at the beginning. I just made a pitch to some of the older folks like ourselves to potentially open your mind mm -hmm. to a new world story and toys. I know more where importantly, you're going. more importantly, father to father. Yep. Show this to your kids. Yep. I've shown it to my kids. I've helped them. Like they love the story. They are intrigued by these different characters, mm -hmm. but they're just kind of like, they don't have what's funny is they don't have the patience that you and I had to have. Cause yes. they're like, wait, you mean I don't just wait. And the next episode just plays like everything yeah. else in my life. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So they're like, what do you mean? Issue four is not out yet. Really, if those of us who are toy collectors who are getting a little long in the tooth and we complain that, you know, I've heard people say there's nothing new, but you're not checking new things out. <laughs> yeah, and, there's tons of new stuff. And the, the notion of like, man, they should make toys. And, you know, it's not just adults who like toys. Kids should like toys, too. Well, if that's something you care about, here's an opportunity to share yeah. some really cool stories. Give your kids something similar to the experience that we had of falling in love with a story and these characters. Yeah. And maybe buying the toys. That's what this is, right? Yeah. You and I have talked about this. Anything that we can do to help a property that we believe in, that we love be out there and hopefully capture the attention of both adult collectors and potential like future generations. That's what AWOC talks about. Yeah. So on that note, explain to folks how we're doing this whole AWOC talk thing that we've got across our two channels. We're doing these ones where we're digging a little bit deeper. We're doing pre-recorded videos available on Brick Something's channel. Mm -hmm. Over on my channel, Highly Articulated, we're going to be doing some live videos with some discussion, some mm -hmm. chat. We're going to have some guests on there. And we want mm -hmm. you know more engagement from you guys. If you're watching yeah. this, hopefully you're watching that and vice versa. We love talking to each other about it, mm -hmm. but we really want to talk to everybody about it. Yeah. So on that note, you've got two options. If something came up while we were talking today and you know you wanted to understand something or wanted us to focus on something more, put that in the chat. Two weeks from now, we'll be over on Highly Articulated with Monkey Business. 
AWOC Talk Live, right? And you can ask us those questions. We'll have a conversation. We'll answer them there. We just actually did one. Absolutely. We had Jeremy and Zach from Authority Figure talking about the board game that goes along with uh, with, with, with Animal Warriors of the Kingdom. So- and it's too bad this went so long. So we can't actually, we don't have the time to talk about the board game. You could go back to Highly Articulated. Check that out. It's a great interview. But also, wouldn't it be great if there was like back in the day, like a 30 second commercial or something? Yeah, if only. If only Spiro Toys had thought about doing a commercial. Introducing Animal Warriors of the Kingdom Primal Battle by Spiro and Authority Figure. A turn-based strategy game using the Animal Warrior action figures as your game pieces. Use strategy and teamwork to overcome the odds or crush your opponents with brute force. The adventure is in your hands. Includes battle boards, rule book, dice, and stat cards for 15 characters. Use Shop Pay to secure your order and pay over time. Figures sold separately. Animal Warriors of the Kingdom Primal Battle. So there you go. Two weeks from when this video was released over here on Brick Something, we'll be over on Highly Articulated. So what's the best way to make sure that you don't miss that? Subscribe to Brick Something. Subscribe to Highly Articulated. All the info is in the description of this channel. Make sure you hit that bell for notifications and you'll be in the know. Hope you've enjoyed this episode of A Walk Talk. I'm Brick Something. And I'm Adam from Highly Articulated. We'll catch you next time on Monkey Business again over on Highly Articulated. All right, folks. Thank you so much for watching. Peace. Bye-bye.